Welcome to the Art of Machine Design. My name is Folkers Rojas. Just to recap, we are looking at the method that I use in order to do the product development process. We're looking at a pyramid, and the pyramid has four sides. It has the function, it has the fundamentals, it has anticipation, and it has the realization. This specific section is covering the function, which is establishing the functional requirements, not only from the engineering point of view, but as a holistic system. If we start looking at the functional requirements, before I even start going into it, I look at three things. The first one is at the production stage. So even if I'm at the bench level prototype, I look at at the final production state, how many units do I have to make? How much is each unit going to cost either for me to make or for me to sell it to the customer? And what are the resources available to me at this point in time? And that includes the amount of money, the people, the equipment, and more importantly, the time that I am allowed in order to develop this product. I can have 10 years to develop a product, yet the market will move on. So it's a really gentle balance between all these topics. As we're getting into that, these are the three things that I carry even before I know what the product is. I have to know these things in advance. Okay, we're gonna address a challenge. What are the scales that we're looking at? How much is it going to cost? And what are the resources? Now let's get into the actual functional requirements. The functional requirements are gonna be coming in almost in three different groups. There's gonna be the engineering functional requirements which are very concrete, and these are very easy to determine at times. It is, what are the loads that the machine has to take? What are the electronics, the power consumption analysis? How much does it have to weigh? What are the ergonomics that we have to consider? So on and so forth. This is in the engineering functional requirements. Now, as we move on from the engineering functional requirements, we start entering the life of the product. This includes from the raw material all the way to the end of life. So if you want to get a little bit into it, you can actually read The Responsible Company, and it's a really good book for anyone who's designing products for consumers because it gets you into the right spirit of what it means to create a product that goes throughout the entire life cycle. In this point of view, let's put it in terms of creating a medical product like a wrist extraction device. In that case, I need to understand what the surgeon is doing with the device, the environment, how is he interacting, what happens before he even gets to the operating room, and what are the different environments in which it's being used. A lot of the product development process that I do happens with a team that I'm working with either a surgeon, which is needing the product, or with someone in the field that is highly knowledgeable in all of the events that take place in the sequences of events. Now, that helps us because then they guide us through all the small things that they're doing, which will help us create a more holistic, balanced product. The third state is the business section. And that business section of the function of the product is looking at scalability, it's looking at barriers to entry, it's looking at FDA approvals, which are wonderful for making sure that we protect the customer and actually we have checked all of the safety measures in place. Business is actually really important right at the development stage because I'm looking at what is the scalability of this system. Remember that I asked for what is the quantity? As soon as I know the quantity and I know what's the scale that we're gonna have to do it at and for what price, I know the manufacturing production units have to lock in already at the beginning. We're also looking at the shareholders. That includes from the OEM which is original equipment manufacturer, all the way to the regulator. 
part also in the business design functional requirements is looking at what is the exit strategy. And I know it will seem weird, but there should be a business plan along with a product and what is the vision for either exiting or continuing and growing that product line. The goal of the function and establishing the functional requirements from quantity, cost, resources to the three phases of engineering, life of product, and business is to create a system where I am looking at establishing the design parameters for this opportunity, market opportunity. Now, the next stage after climbing up the function phase is going to be going on top of the creativity pyramid with a good familiarity of the functional requirements and the scalability of the unit, which are in the function phase of the pyramid. Now you can actually go and look from the top of the pyramid towards the, all the different phases and start creating a balanced structure. Depending on the product development stage in which you're in, this is either bench level prototype, size prototype, function prototype, or production unit, you're going to be focusing more on one side of the pyramid and another at the beginning. Eventually, you're gonna to have to establish a balance between all four phases. Now, the next section after this is going to be what happens from the creativity point of view. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please click the like button. If you want to see some more videos of a different topic, please leave a comment below. Have a great day.